Vocabulary 2. Hi, my name is Sonia Berger and you are watching the Best My Test TOEFL Vocabulary video series. Today we continue talking about words that relate to animal biology and we start with animal diet. And no, that is not animals slimming down. That is a reference to the type of food that animals eat. Our first three words are herbivore, carnivore and omnivore. Now, as we did in the first video, we're going to break these words up into their roots. And once you understand the meaning of those roots, it becomes much easier to understand the word and to remember it. So, herbivore. The vol part of the word comes from a Latin root that means to swallow, basically to eat. And herby, yes, comes from a Latin word that means plant. So a herbivore is an animal that swallows plants, a plant eater. Carnivores are animals that eat meat. Carnus is the Latin word that means meat. So carnivores eat meat and they specifically hunt and kill their prey. And that brings us to omnivore. Those of you who know the meaning of Greek roots will know that omni means all. So an omnivore is an animal that swallows all, an all eater. Basically an omnivore eats plants as well as meat. So let's look at two sample sentences in which the word herbivore and the word omnivore are used. The digestive systems of herbivores break down plant cells in grasses and other plants and unlock nutrients. Approximately 95% of humans are omnivores who feed on both animal tissue and plants. The variety of things that humans eat is staggering. The human diet may include fish, pork, snails, a variety of vegetables such as avocados, lychees, green beans, walnuts and mushrooms. And last, but definitely not least, chocolate pudding. Let's move on from diet to temperature. Our two words that relate to temperature are endotherm and ectotherm. Endo means within. Therm comes from a Greek word that means heat. So an endotherm is an animal that generates its own heat from within. Examples would be mammals and birds. They don't need outside sources of energy to generate heat. Their temperature, their body heat is generated from within. Ectotherms, on the other hand, do need outside sources of energy to generate body heat. Um, in most cases, they need the sun's energy to generate body heat. So ecto means outside and therm means heat. And a good example would be reptiles. That is why snakes are much more active in summer. That's when you should watch out. In winter, if you walk in the bush, it's okay. But in summer, you watch out for snakes because they soak up all that energy from the sun and then they become active and then there's a bit of danger for humans who stumble upon them. So here are two sample sentences illustrating endotherm and ectotherm. Sheep are endotherms because they generate their own body heat. Tortoises are ectotherms because they rely on their environment to sustain their body temperature. The last two words we'll discuss today are vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have spinal columns. Mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians and fish are all vertebrates. And isn't it amazing how many of these words you've already learnt. I hope you remember their meanings. Invertebrates are animals that do not have a spine. Insects, snails, crustaceans and worms are all invertebrates. 
Let's look at two sentences that illustrate the meanings of vertebrates and invertebrates. This mounted skeleton of Brachiosaurus branchi in the Berlin Museum of Natural History is 13.27 meters high. The reptile was definitely a vertebrate, judging by its incredibly long spinal column. This invertebrate, seen on the Thai island of Koh Lantar, has neither spine nor shell for that matter. And that's all for today. If you want to learn more about TOEFL vocabularies or TOEFL practices, go to the Best My Test website. Here is the address www.bestmytest.com.